Okay, you ready for this? Oh. That sounds absolutely horrible. Well, hey guys, it's Joel and welcome back to the Porsche Cayenne and a much awaited video for me because there's a few things as you probably saw from the intro of the video that need sorting with this Cayenne. And I've talked previously about doing various road trips and bits and bobs in this car, but I've been waiting to get it booked in so that I can get some pretty important elements fixed before embarking on any sort of adventure. So those things are, as you probably saw from the very start of the video, the catalytic converter, it's got a leak, uh, I think, where it meets the manifold or the rest of the exhaust. We looked at it in the first video down at ePorsche. It was uh, leaking and you can very much hear it. I think the bolts have essentially all filed away and there's almost nothing holding it on. So we've got some replacement bolts and a new gasket, I believe, that's going to be getting fit today, which should hopefully, hopefully stop me getting my intermittent engine light, which only comes on maybe once a month, but also should mean that it's not deafening and rattly when I drive the car, which has not been fun over the past well, couple of months actually since it got a bit worse. Then we've also got the brake boost pipe, which Chris very cleverly found in the engine bay when we went for the inspection, I think back in January. You could see that it was coming away. And I actually noticed Matt Watson of Carwow in his recent video, because he's just bought a KN Turbo, uh, a 957 generation car, he just had his brake boost pipe replaced. And it's obviously extremely important to get that done because essentially you can lose brake pressure if that rips or tears anymore. And then the belt. Um, Chris again noticed that there was a little bit of a tear in the belt and so I've been quite anxious about getting that done. So we're getting the belt replaced. I think those are the three things that we're getting done today. So needless to say, we're heading down to ePorsche in Bisley this morning to go and see Chris and the guys again, get the KM back up on a ramp and finally get all of these pretty essential things fixed. So anyway, I'll catch up with you once we get down to Bisley and to ePorsche. So whilst we drive the KM to ePorsche then I very quickly want to say thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and I want to show you how quick it is for me to order next week's meals. If you don't know who HelloFresh are, they literally will deliver a box of your selected meals to your doorstep which you can then make yourself with very easy and clearly laid out instructions. I'm going to quickly just go through this menu here, this is what I can order for next week. I've got three choices, straight away fish and chips, homemade tartar sauce with peas, yes please. I'm going to be ordering that one. Also this leek and potato phyllo scrunch pie, that looks fantastic. Tells me here that it's uh, medium difficulty and the instructions here I can look at too. And also this, I'm going to choose the apple and sage glazed chicken with mashed and buttered onions. Also a 45 minute preparation time. And the great thing about HelloFresh for me, I have quite a severe nut allergy and it tells me all of the allergens on the page when I order the food. And also because I'm making it as well, I'm just not worried that there's going to be anything in there that I don't want to be eating. So there's at least 50 different meal choices I can choose from just on this week alone. They do change the meals very regularly as well, so you're never going to get bored eating the same thing. It's quite interesting as well learning how to cook with different ingredients that I would ordinarily never use. With HelloFresh as well, the other fantastic thing for me in particular is that it's extremely flexible, so there's no commitment. You can pause your subscription. You don't have to have meals delivered every single week and change the amount of people you want it for. Also where it's getting delivered, which is really helpful if you're say going away or visiting someone. So scan the QR code on the screen now or go to the link in my description. And when using code ITSJOEL2024, you'll get yourself 60% off your first box and 20% off for the next two months, plus some free gifts. It's a really, really good deal. I do strongly recommend HelloFresh. And with that, I'd imagine we've just about arrived at ePorsche. Okay everyone, so we're back today at ePorsche finally to get some bits done to the KN, which Chris is going to kindly explain, hopefully, <laughs> what, we're, what we're going to yeah. do today. So we've got a new belt, we have a new uh, brake booster pipe, which uh, if you remember from the last video had a little split on the hose, so we've ordered one of those in. We're going to fix your blowing exhaust, which has been an issue I think ever since you left. And yeah. um, we're going to try and do the gearbox oil and filter, but as Joel's uh, travelled a bit of a way, we've got to see 
what the temperature is on the gearbox because you have to set it at a, at a correct temperature. So that's what we're hopefully going to be doing today for you. Fantastic. Yeah, because I actually didn't mention on the way down, but the gearbox, it's not too bad, but I don't know when it was last done. I, I yeah. can't see a record of it, I don't think. And also just notice, you know, in, in drive, in second into third, it kind of clunks a little bit. I and mean, it could be like something else, but it's always worth you've, doing, you've, isn't it? You've got to start at a, at a point, and normally cars of this age, it's either been missed or it hasn't been done for a while. So a good place to start is to get your gearbox yeah. and filter done, because often it doesn't get done. So yeah. I think we'll, we'll start off under the bonnet, we'll do the belt, brake booster pipe, then we'll go up in the air, fix your playing exhaust, and then we'll see what the temperature is of the gearbox. Perfect. And uh, gearbox all, and we'll see if we can get that done as well. Sounds great. So, cool, cover off. So this was the split hose that we we will replace in a bit, just to confirm, there you go. That that could be why it's running uh, yeah. lumpy, because obviously if it's drawing in air in there, it's yeah. not particularly secure. Um, yeah. I think that's got a bit worse as well, hasn't it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So it's just as well we're getting that sorted. Right, we're going to start with the belt, which is down here. So we'll just take this pipe out of the way and we will gain access. Yeah, so I don't think I've actually told the viewers yet because I, I sort of just did it at home when I wasn't filming. But I did try, well, I did actually successfully uh, clean out the throttle body. But I found this was such a, a pain to get off. And I could never actually take the throttle body out completely because the connector to the throttle body, I just couldn't get it out even with like a flat head, but I was probably doing it oh, wrong. Oh, what, the, um, the... The electronic connector. The electri oh, right. I just couldn't pull it out. Yeah, they can, they, they, sometimes they can be a bit, a bit so tricky to remove. So I just took the hose out and yeah, just pinned it out of the way and then did my best with it with the, well, actually, no, I, I did the torques on the throttle while he took it out, but just obviously didn't remove it from the car. But it didn't seem to make too much difference, although it did feel a little bit smoother, I think. That's when we realized I put it back on the wrong way or something. So. This here is the tensioner. So what we're going to do is Volkswagen or Porsche, should I say? They have this tensioner which you take the pressure off, and then what you do is you can put a screw in there to hold the tension off while you change the valve. Clever German technology. I think I said this last time to you, Chris, when I was here, but with the few tiny little bits and bobs I've done and the things I've seen you guys doing to this car and other Porsches actually, they just genuinely seem to be well thought out, especially yes. for repairs. Because even I did go into, you know, my Tiptronic won't stay in manual. Yeah. So I did go in um, and pulled up all of the clips and the, but just the very fact that under the central storage compartment, there's a tool, that, you know, an Allen key to do those bolts. Yes. But if you ever change your belt yourself, what you need to do is remember the routing of the belt, because otherwise you take the belt off and then you're like, which way Oops. did that go? <laughs> and then you're there for quite a while trying to work out um, the routing of the belt. Luckily, we have some information on the computer that tells us that route. Or, if you're a bit sad like me, you kind of know the route. <laughs> That's experience though, isn't it? And knowledge. What would happen if you put the belt on the wrong way? Would it just not go on? Or um, would it mean It would you're... either, yeah. So it would either not fit very well. You either wouldn't be able to get enough tension to get the belt on or off, or it would just be really slack, you know? So yeah. It's a bit fiddly. Put that belt out of there. Out there. Out there. Hey. There was a big crack in it, wasn't there? There you go, see? We fold it over. Yeah, see, this is one of the reasons I didn't fancy like doing a big trip, just in case. Because some viewers might not remember, when I had my Porsche Boxster, I literally did take that on a trip to Germany, but at the Euro Tunnel, my belt went. <laughs> it literally meant as I was rolling yeah. onto the carriage, my car was steaming because obviously the water pump had failed. And uh, might be the same bit, but yeah, so I just did not want a repeat of that in any yeah. way. It was definitely worth changing once you get cracks like that. That's well, pretty good considering I think since it doesn't seem to have worsened that much no. in the last few thousand miles that I've done. So that's sometimes they won't, but sometimes they it's just not, it's one of those things it's ding. relatively inexpensive to do, isn't it? I mean, the belt, what does the belt actually cost? Like, you know, they're not. They're not, they're not cheap, these belts, but they're, they're but they're not silly money compared to yeah. leaving you on the side of the road. Exactly, so. for the ramifications. So the belt's about it. 80 quid. Yeah. And it's 45 minutes to change it, something like that at the most. Okay, so now we've got the belt off. There's a chance to check all the other pulleys. 
you, you should check it when you take the belt off. So that's the water pump pulley. So you can check that. There is, there's very slight play in there, but there, there always is tiny play, but yeah. it's nothing, nothing really to be worried about. Um, tensioner one, that's, it was, that's quite noisy. Okay. And there's a bit of play in that. So um, ideally, if it was a customer, you'd probably advise that that would probably be changed with that play in there like that. Alternator pulley is down here. This here is a freewheel pulley. If you hold the impeller, sometimes they seize up, you see. Okay. And yeah, yours is seized up. Mm. <laughs> so, We're finding more. Yeah, yeah. Um, so alternator C, alternator pulley C, so then you can, you, you can have issues with the belt jumping okay. and, and stuff like that, worst case. Um, um, there's another idler pulley down there, which that one's, that one's pretty decent to be fair. Not no play and it's quiet. Good news. That's good. Uh, next one down, AC compressor. These ones have a tendency to, but you can't really because it's a mag, got a magnetic clutch in it and stuff. You can't really, you can't really feel anything or you know you would hear it with the engine noise if it was absolutely knackered. The one right down the bottom is power steering pump, which uh, yeah. They're generally fine. So, are these um, all of these pulleys? Are they essentially like belts, or, or are you talking? Are you talking about the actual the metal part connected yeah, to the so, engine? Yeah. So uh, the pulleys are. Um, so so this pulley is like the tensioner pulley. So it's really like a guide wheel, like tensioner pulley. Right. Yeah. So that's probably under quite a lot of strain. And all yeah. it is, it's a plastic. This is, believe it or not, is a plastic pulley pressed onto a metal bearing. The alternator pulley is obviously a metal um, pulley and it's got a, like a free wheel clutch in it and they just seize up. So, okay. Yeah. Um, and the rest of them are water pumps got a bearing in it, you know, um, metal pulley. All the others are, yeah, they're pretty, pretty similar things, but yeah. And so all these pulleys, they're, they're individual ones that all need to be replaced respectively. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And until you get the belt off, you can't really, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't really tell what you need. Um, with regards to that. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, because sometimes you get a noise. So if you get a noisy water pump, or, or you get a noise from the engine that you suspect is with belt running, what you can do on some engines, these I think you can, um, some modern engines you can't, because they've got a rubber dampener in the crank pulley. Okay. So if you run the engine without the belt on, it can damage that. Okay. But with these, you're safe to just start it up. And if the noise goes without the belt on, then you know, Noise out. Sometimes you don't have to start it, you can just literally take the belt off, check the pulleys just like I did, and go, oh yeah, it's that, you know. So Chris has just gone to see if he can find a uh, part there for that seized pulley. I think that's what he's looking for anyway. Um, but yeah, just quickly, in my absence, the car's absence on YouTube since you've seen it last, I did actually take the throttle body out and give it a good clean. Uh, we thought that might be the cause of the car being slightly, slightly rougher idle. I mean, it's very minimal to be honest, but it was something I just wanted to look at anyway. And I did take the throttle body out and it was pretty dirty. You can see it's still pretty dirty, although it was about a few weeks ago that I cleaned it. Um, although this electronic connector here, I just could not for the life of me um, take out. So what I did was just undid the, I think they're T25s, there's four of them, and took this out, obviously removed the pipe uh, the hose that's currently gone took this little bit out here and uh, gave it the best clean I could um, and it, it did make the drive a little bit smoother so it did improve it but that slight rough idle issue is still present I mean like I said it's very minor and it's the car drives fine especially once it's warm but um, it could also potentially be this split hose uh, the split brake hose here as Chris says, if that's sucking in, then that could cause the engine to idle a little bit funny as well. So that's getting replaced today. Obviously, this is the new belt that's going to be going on. But before we do that, we're just going to see if we could potentially replace this seized one, I think. And uh, also, as I mentioned, I did actually have a little go at fixing the issue where when I pop this across into manual, it doesn't register. It sort of doesn't stay in manual. You can use the Tiptronic buttons on the wheel to select gears, but it always reverts after, I don't know, 10 seconds or so back to drive. And uh, in this car, where fuel economy is such an issue, there's sometimes say I want to force it into sixth gear uh, where I can see the road ahead and know that I'm not gonna need to be in fifth or fourth or whatever it is. So I did um, take all of this apart 
uh, this whole central console all has to come up to the gear knob off and normally it's this plastic part here which is the micro switch I believe which is broken and, and causes the the sort of the knob not to register where it is however I did take it all apart and found that it was fine it's in perfect condition so what I actually did is just went down with some compressed air gave it all a bit of a clean not knowing if that was really going to do anything but I did do that and now I'd say 50% of the time it works so I did improve it, I haven't fixed it fully, but basically every time I drive the car I can get it to stay in manual now, which is brilliant because I couldn't do that before. I don't know if you're familiar with Car Wow. No. Matt Watson, the presenter of Car Wow, big, okay. big channel. He bought recently a 957 Turbo mm -hmm. and he just went to Porsche Reading to have some bits done and this was one of those bits. And the chat yeah. was saying there is quite a common, I think you said before. The turbos you? especially, are, are, it brings up a brake booster fault in the dash. Uh, okay. Because um, with a turbo, it doesn't create as much vacuum. Right. So they have an, an electronic brake booster pump okay. on the servo. And there's a lot more pipe work um, under this cover down here. And they are, they are renowned for exactly like yours done, those, those splitting and giving a leak. Yeah. And it creates all kinds of faults. So yeah, these are... Uh, Check your pipe work, people. And this one, I think you said before, it's brake related, isn't it? So the main yes. symptoms of it actually from a driving perspective yeah. would be brakes yeah. not working. It's basically the vacuum system. So um, this, this, you know that pipe that goes on the throttle body yes. at the bottom? Yeah. So that's that one there. Ah, gotcha, okay. Yeah, and then this one goes back round um, to the intake down there. And then this one goes to the brake, brake servo under here. Onto, onto that rubber pipe there. And it all comes as one big yes. intricate part, big which is quite part. cool to look at actually. From Porsche. From Porsche, of course. Um, I think that was about 87 quid plus fat, or which, just 90 quid plus fat, which I think anything that's I don't not think that's got too bad anything for without. a dealer. I do want to say, and I'll make another video about it at some point, but mm. this has probably been, in touch word, in terms of the mileage I've done, one of the most reliable cars I've ever owned. And it's, you know, it's not cost yeah. an arm and a leg no. um, to, apart, to keep it running. Fuel. Apart from the fuel, but that's a that's whole other story. <laughs> so yeah, very no good worries. point. Right, let's get Excellent. it fitted. Just a little bit of a bugger to get off. It's just that pipe connection down the back there. Obviously, you've got to squeeze the two, the two little. It's basically the same connection as. This one, so you've got to squeeze those two together and pull it off. But because it's down underneath, oh, right see. underneath this thing, so what I'll do, these plastic things like to break, so you have to be really careful. Because if you break that, then then you've got to split, and then it, you will have an air leak because that's the breather pipe. If you, that's the breather valve. If you so break what? that, I book a hotel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, we could, we could probably repair it in a way that we. Probably wouldn't put on video, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but to get you out of the, yes, uh, you yeah. know, to, to, to get, avoid to get you home. Yeah. But um, yeah, if we just pull this out of the way, then you know, be careful, and then there's no risk of of that getting damaged by your hands getting down there. And yeah, stuff of course, like that. of course. That's the issue of all these cars. All now, these th this sort of era cars is um, all the breather pipes. They're all plastic and stuff. And as soon as you start. As soon as you start doing stuff, it can just so easily, like literally, you could just put your hand down there, just lean on that a bit hard, and it would just go crack because they just go brittle. So mm. it's happened so many times, and it it will happen again. So you you could just rush in there like a bull in a china shop, and it would just break and go. Oh, but if it takes you a little bit longer to be a little bit careful, and you get it's the, the job old done. saying of slow and steady wins the race, isn't yeah. it? I think with car mechanics, you have to be patient, which is especially this age of absolutely. We see a lot of this age era of car. And things do take a lot longer normally than what we book out as well because yeah. it's either do that or you, you, you can just go in and, you know, end up with a car that, a yard full of cars that you're waiting for bits for, which... Yeah. So yeah, it's not until I pulled it off, it's actually split. Ah. That Same is, split, but on the other end. And that's the sort of thing you, you'd never ever see that in no. just an inspection, would no. you? Because that you can't, was right yeah. back here after taking that off as well over there yeah. so yeah so well, yeah again another good reason for doing this then so that could fix all your running uh, that'd be amazing i mean that would be great so yeah 
Because as I say, the car has been absolutely fantastic. It's just a couple of niggly bits, like, yeah. you know, with the slightly rough running and the noisy <laughs> exhaust. But um, yeah, well, let's see anyway, fingers crossed. So to reiterate what we were discussing off camera then, the, yep. you've identified that the, the tensioner and the alternator pulley yep. both ought to do with replacing. Yes. Um, yeah, we can't, we can't get the parts today, but we can no. probably get them in the next couple of days. Yep. So I'll drop the car back in in a couple of days yep. time. And we'll just take the belt back off, replace yep. those, put the belt but back yeah, on, and then we'll we should be all good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Also, when you fit the belt, you will also want to have a look, just make sure that all the ribs are correctly seated. This belt's a double rib belt. Some of them are smooth on the back, but this one's a double rib because it runs on both runs on both sides. So you see it down there, it obviously runs off the back and the front, but you just got to make sure that one's off. Just make sure they're all in because otherwise, um, if you if they're not if it's not quite seated properly on a on a rib, um, it can um, obviously. You might be able to see, you might be able to show you. If this rib on this belt isn't quite in the right place, it's just going to sit up on there, and then all that's going to happen, like that. So if, if, if you end up tensioning it, and it's like mm. a little bit off, say like that, all that's going to happen is that's going to spin around. The belt's even going to jump off, or it's going to chew the new belt, and then the belt's going to break. Yeah. And then, you know, it's pointless changing the belt if it's not fitted properly. I have seen it a few times. Um, so yeah, you just got to double check that everything's all good. Um, Slow and steady again, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, just 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 double checking your work, just making sure everything's right. And if you actually look at that, you can probably see how much tighter that belt is because before that gap was a lot, you know, it was a lot, lot smaller. Yeah. Um, whereas now it's because the belt's tighter. It's not. Is it because the, the belt's thin over time as well? Yeah, they just they stretch. Obviously, being under that much tension and going round and round. Yeah, for that's true. However many miles, I don't know when this one was last. No, last not sure, actually. Probably a while ago. Normally, six years is a bit is like the when you're uh, got a rolling pin on on dough. Yeah, I mean, over time, yeah, yeah. it's like doing another cycle of but, that. Um, so. Six years is the recommended mm. change. So, if you think six years could be sixty thousand miles. Mm. I have to look through the How many history. miles would you do in six years? Like, <laughs> yeah, I do about probably. If you kept a car for six years. 150,000 miles in six years, I'd imagine. So, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah six years, 60,000, check the belt, change it. Yeah, that's it. Excellent. But it's a shame that all of Chris's hard work is going to come undone anyway <laughs> on, on the, in a couple of days' time. It comes back off to <laughs> replace those other parts. I'll delegate that one. <laughs> shiny uh, new boost pipe and yeah. did, did we manage to not break any plastic stuff nope. as well no nope. we were careful and uh, result yeah. not yet not yet yeah there's still time, always time. there's always time <laughs> yeah. while it's while it's here yeah that's looking much better so it's interesting because there were several bits that were split actually right on the back here yeah. that one could not possibly see from an inspection like this no. See, we could we noticed the one that was split here. This is the part that was split that we saw, wasn't it? Yep. And there was a similar That's split. Here on the yeah. So that hopefully, because me cleaning the throttle body out, obviously that's fed by this. No, I, I don't know. But it's it's all connected, isn't it? Yes. So if, if there's splits all the way along here, yeah. then me cleaning that out probably not going to make all that much difference anyway. So hopefully with that. Was it dirty this, when you cleaned it? It out? was pretty dirty. So it's always worth doing. It's always worth doing, but it hopefully. Cost you anything, did it? This really? should, uh, no, it was almost as a, a can of carb cleaner and that was it. Yep. Four quid or whatever. And a bit right. of time. So I suppose we should start it up and see if it's... Should we have a look? Quick, quick start up. Okay. <laughs> the revs look stable. Yeah. But the proof will be in the pudding when I do a cold start on it, because that yeah. seems to be when it presents the yeah, worst yeah. rough idling, if you can yeah. call it that. But at the moment, it seems very good. Oh, 
nicely. That one around the top there is going to be a bit of a, what we might have to do. We take the cat out. Yeah, do it outside the car. And we can just get it bonk up there, so. So what has happened is these here have corroded away the nuts. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's just dropped out. And then obviously the gasket's got, you know, it's got loose, chattering around. So we have got a new gasket. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get the cat off, get it in the vise, and then we'll heat, heat this up, tap these out, and then we'll put stainless steel nuts and bolts in there. Excellent. That's what we do with a lot of these fixings, is Porsche have the, the press studs in. Yeah. And we've 997s, 996s, 986s, 987s, 981s, all of them. We literally, um, you know, heat them up, tap them out, put stainless nuts and bolts in. The only thing I thought is, because the gasket's in such a state, could any of it broken apart potentially and got itself into it, it, here? It, it could have done, I think, but I think it's more, because it's on the outside, it's more likely to fall off. But once the cat's off, we can we can have a look at it. We can check, it. yeah, because that would be my worst fear, is like yeah. replacing it all and then it's still rattling like a tin no. can because there's something in there. We can have a look inside there yeah. when it's Fantastic, when it's yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this sorted. <laughs> it's just one of those, you know, you know, things that don't really affect the way the car drives, but it's just annoying, annoying. every yeah. time you drive the car. And like, especially like pulling out where I live, it's just, I feel it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. You know, it's just like rattling around. Yay. There we go. That is the catalytic converter. Yep. See, there is a bit of dust in there. Ah, yeah. You see, that? see, that's probably what's like rattling. It could be, yeah. And that certainly won't help. So we'll fish that out. Cat actually looks pretty good. That's good. Yeah, because you don't really want to replace a cat on one of these, do you? Because it's not the cheapest. But this is, is like the, the main cat, and it's got two pre cats. Yes. Off the manifold, right up the top there. Right oh, I up see. There. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Like Double cats up there. Yeah. And they're all expensive. Yeah. Here's a bit of the old, I'm trying not to cut myself because it's extremely sharp. This is part of the old gasket or gasket, so I can focus the camera on it. it. Doesn't seem to want to, but yeah, it's part of the old gasket here that's completely bent, hasn't it? That's crazy, which we're replacing today. Sorry, it won't focus, that's really annoying. We've got a new one in here. I have to think that this, you can see, this once was that when the car was new, presumably. I can't imagine it's been ever replaced. Yeah, so this stainless bolts, cat can then get reattached. No leaks, no noise, no rattles, and hopefully no more engine light. I mean, it's not certain that it's that, but when we ran the codes last time, it did come up with catalytic converter causing the engine light. So this is good. a bit of doing there, didn't it? Yeah. I can't come anywhere near these Porsche specialist guys without some sort of fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dean uh, at LaRose Porsche and, and his mate trying to set fire to my Boxster. It's I've uh, got you setting fire to my... Yeah, the, the you, nuts are so stubborn. You can they? try and cut them or drill them, but as long as you know how to use one of these things and you don't yeah. blow everything apart, yeah. um, by far the quickest and easiest way is... is is the torch just to heat it up, bang them out? Because yeah. you'll be drilling that for forever and a day. You know, <laughs> angle grinder, and drill, and yeah, and you'll be—it's hard work, and there's swarf everywhere. Whereas you just, you're careful, just careful, just gently, gently heat it, heat it, and you can, you get a good dunk, dunk, and then it's gone. And then it's gone. Like yeah. that first one was stubborn. So there's a, there's that bit there, which just fires oxygen out, and then it just, it just literally blows it. It's got some nice new yep. nuts in here. Nuts and bolts, yeah. Fantastic. Rather than replacing the clamp, all that's happened is the bolts have snapped. One of them snapped around, did it? So, um, and someone has replaced them just with nuts and bolts anyway, so we put new stainless nuts and bolts in Perfect. there. Perfect. And yeah, we've got a new gasket to go up here. And then, I'm gonna fit the cat up, new gasket, and uh, no more clanging and blowing so. and <laughs> be a nice quiet ride, ride home. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, change the 
changed about, although we are waiting on a tensioner and an alternator pulley, which um, we're going to get in the next couple of days, and Joel's going to pop in, we're going to do that. We fitted the pipe, we removed the cap, fixed all the fixings, and that's all back together. So now we're going to, we're going to do the gearbox oil and filter. We have a Marla filter and sump gasket set. We're going to put some fresh oil in it, see if it fixes or see if you know the right step in the right direction of trying to fix the the jolting in second gear so let's crack on so drain plug fill plug all these bolts sump down off have a look in there any treasure in there oh. metal filings yeah <laughs> hopefully not and, uh, yeah uh one thing i normally say when i when you do things that aren't undone very often is with diffs and gearboxes is i would always advise undoing the fill plug before the drain plug, just to make sure you can get it off. You can undo it, because otherwise you drain it. If that rounds out, how are you going to get the oil back in? Yeah, that's yeah. a very that is so that, that is that's top tip. Invaluable that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. And these are normally really tight. Yeah. And as I suspected, oh, I'm not as strong as I used to be, obviously. <laughs> Matthew, I require your assistance. Go on then, mate. Do your best. Cheers, mate. Is it? Now you can go home. No, you can't. <laughs> Done for the day. So yeah, there you go. Get a man's bath. That's <laughs> another top tip right there. Right then. That one's a bit looser. To be fair, it looks quite clean. Yay! It's <laughs> good news. Like I say, it may well have been done yeah. fair in the last few years. I just can't remember for the, for the life of me what. It does, I, I think it has been done at some point because, um, because otherwise it, it would, I would expect it. It would be darker, wouldn't it? To be well. not quite as clean as that. Yeah. It's kind of good, but kind of bad. Well, because if, uh, if I've got another issue. If then it it's... was all dirty and stuff, you would say, yeah, well, maybe it could be the issue. But being that clean, I don't know, it might have. I mean, I think I'm. You being... do get some people that just change your and they don't change the filter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I anyway. think also I am as a owner quite anal with sort of like a pernickety. Yes. So it's very very minor when it sort of yeah. does this lumpy thing, but you know it's always a sign of something potentially. This is the filter which will change here. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is the valve body. You see all these electrical solenoids in here? Yeah. And that's obviously the wiring that goes to it. And that's what tells it when to change gear and etc. etc. So is it possible the filter might, if the filter has been done, it might tell yeah. us what normally happens when you pull these off, the load more oil decides to uh, whoop, decides to come out. Yeah. Which is always and yeah, put those holes in the subframe. It's always good fun in my book, getting covered in oil, as we, I did last time when I did the oil filler. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, that was messy. Here it comes, already. Oh yeah. And what did I tell you? And the field, it doesn't look that old, that, you know, but it has got that sort of, funny metallic -y sort of color to it, but a lot of them do, so. There's no no stamp on it. There's no stamp. There's no part number. See, if you look at if you look at this filter, there's obviously a Marla filter, which is a OE quality brand. Yeah, it has, has a Marla a stamp, stamp and yeah. a part number. But that one hasn't got anything on it. So, so that's probably some cheapo. Yeah, I would I would guess so. Off the internet, so. eBay maybe. Yeah, normally if it's Marla, it's they normally stamp it. And it so. means they've probably done it themselves as well. Yeah. Bit of lubrication on the seal there. And then that goes in there. Turn my head torch on because otherwise I can't see. And then that. There you go. Pushes in like that. So clean all these little. Don't forget. Put these back in. Right. So. So with that all cleaned. Nice and clean that. There we go. Right, so we just plug 
plugging in with this launch because it's a lot quicker than the PeeWiz because it goes through all the systems. So because all we need to get up is the transmission temperature. There's no rattling either. No. Ha. Right, so gone through the gears. This is just a cheap, um, you can get a snap-on one which is very expensive. This is just a cheap one um, and that's saying it's 30, 30, 30, 30.5. So what's this for? Is this checking the gearbox oil level? Okay. So we've drained it, we changed the filter, we filled it, um, and then what you have to do is get it to the right temperature to, to set the level. Okay. So obviously that, that little spout in that sump goes up, and then that's why you need like a, that's like a modified end, because you've got to go up and then over the side. Yeah. So it fills up to a point, and when it gets to that level, that's the correct level at that temperature. Okay, so Chris is just topping up the oil in the gearbox, making sure that that's at the right level. And you can barely tell, but the car is running and it's nice and quiet because now we don't have a catalytic converter or it leaking just behind the catalytic converter, which I'm so excited for now. It's not gonna be you know, making really horrible noise every time I start it up, as you heard at the start of the video. Also, we've got the new belt on, of course, which is good news. It'll be interesting to see with the gearbox service whether it's improved anything. I mean, I should say, the issues I've noticed with the gearbox are extremely minor. It's just every now and then, second into third gear, it's a little bit lumpy. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if that's helped it at all. Obviously with the new belt, that's just peace of mind then that it's okay. Although we do need to change the alternator pulley and the tensioner, I believe it is. Those parts have been ordered and in a couple of days time, I'm back in the area and we'll get them switched over. But you probably won't see that in this video. So the car, as far as I'm aware now, it's pretty much sorted. Absolutely everything on it that could possibly need doing has been done. So once that's all tightened up and the under trays are back on, we can uh, take the car out and see how, see how she fares. So look at this now, if we give the car a bit of a rev, there's no more, no more rattling, which is much, much better. Oh. All right, Chris, so KN uh, done. Yep. Good day's work, that wasn't it? So yeah. let me just recap. So done the belt, although in a couple of days time, we need to come back, yep. take the belt back off yep. to do the alternator pulley yep. and the tensioner. Yep. Obviously those sorts of things can only be found when you do get the belt yeah, off. So I suppose yep. that was always going to happen. Um, gearbox service, which is fantastic. Change of fluid, done the yep. filter, the catalytic converter. Now that's properly secured, yep. new gasket. Sounds stainless bolts and now yeah exactly it's just idling nice and quiet because before it was just rattling around like if you were to get a you know when your pepsi can and the bit yeah. falls in and then you shake yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it was, that's what it was like it was yeah. such a nightmare what else the... oh the brake boost pipe yeah yeah brake boost so pipe. i don't know do you think i'd notice anything when i'm driving the car well you it might, might it might when it's, when it's cold tomorrow and you start it it might, it might be, be smoother. Um, might be a bit smoother yeah so so very good so yeah. um yeah once again massive thank you no to problem. Chris in particular, but the guys yeah. at ePorsche. Do make sure, if you've got a Porsche, guys, bring it here, because, um, well, I did reference Matt Watson's video earlier where he took it to a main dealer, his KN, and the prices were astronomical, let's just say. And so, yeah, do give them a call and check the link in the description. If you've got a Porsche and you need anything done to it, I can highly recommend the guys down here at ePorsche. So anyway, I should probably give you some money, and then we'll take the car out on the road and see how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so weird. When I just started it then, I thought, oh, it's not started, but it has. It's just because the catalytic converter's not rattling anymore. Oh, that is so nice. Okay, well, let's take this home now and see, just see how it goes, really. I'm hoping it feels a little bit smoother, actually, just in general, because of that brake uh, hose that we did. That should help with the whole, I guess, how well the car fuels itself and also i'm hoping that the the gearing is just also a little bit smoother and uh not as lumpy so uh the tiptronic box in this is never the best you know in the world in fact i drove porsche gb's uh kn they have a 4.5 which jeremy clarkson had for a while actually on his farm 
which is very low mileage, I think 20,000 miles or something like that. And even that felt a little bit, you know, lumpy, I'd say. So you can't really expect miracles. But yeah, it does feel good to drive. These always do feel good to drive these cars. And I have to say, it does feel very smooth, actually. Yeah, that's interesting. So when I let off the throttle, it doesn't lurch, which it used to. So maybe that has helped that a little bit. And also just the pickup on the throttle there is much smoother, less, less jumpy, I'd say. The guys at ePorsche are great. Chris is fantastic. Obviously, he's brilliant, uh, a brilliant, brilliant specialist and mechanic. But as you guys will all attest to, he's fantastic on camera as well. And honestly, I ask him a million questions when I'm stood there all day watching him work. And it's really, really interesting to see just true professionals doing their thing. And so I'll reiterate, if you do own any Porsche, um, I strongly recommend taking it down to e-Porsche for almost anything. Uh, or La Rose Porsche in Kent as well, where I've had some experiences. They're both under the same ownership. So either one of those two places, you're in very, very safe hands. And I'm not just saying it because I want to think it. Maybe it's a bit of a sort of placebo effect, but the car feels really smooth. I mean, yeah, I mean, actually changing gear there, second into third, very, very smooth. And if that is because of the oil change, then it's made a noticeable difference actually, which I wasn't really expecting. And just, so here, sort of quarter way down the pedal, and if we let off, it feels much more linear. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> needless to say, I'm very, very pleased indeed. And we'll go back in a couple of days, get the alternator pulley, get the tensioner replaced, new belt back on, and then really uh, the car will be good to go. Whether I do a big road trip in it or not, I'm not too sure because, I mean, totally honest, if you were following the content, my big plan was to get the winter tyres or the all-season tyres that I've got on now so that I could go into Europe during the winter, February or early March. As you can very much see, we're well into April now, and so the need for those tyres is actually now redundant. And my plans, well, I've, I've got bigger plans, let's say, for the summer, which I may need to free up, well, I will need to free up funds for, um, which will mean selling this KN. So whether or not that happens before I manage to do a big road trip in it or not, I'm not too sure. But I mean, comment below if you're still really keen to see me take this on an adventure, as I did say I would, do comment below but uh yeah i've got i've got some plans let's say for later in the year but yeah this thing is driving really really well now i'm very very pleased indeed thank you so much to chris and e porsche for having me down again thank you all so much for watching the video and i'll see you in the next one very very soon